So again, I, I'd like to go down real quick and read what it's required. Okay, determine, I, I wish they could, Doc's income from Oak. Okay, so who's the parent here and who's the child? Oak's the child. Okay, good. And determine the, the balance sheet of the investment in Oak account. Okay. So at the end of it, Doc's going to tell me what he, what the investment account is for the other. Okay. So Doc Company acquired a 30% interest, so I'm not cost, I'm not equity, right? I'm not, I don't have to consolidate right now, but I still have to do my, I have to do the equity method. Um, they bought it for $2 million cash. Assume the cost of the investment equals the fair value of Oak's net asset. Um, and then when they did that, Doc assigned, you know, 500000 of fair value uh, over the interest to the following things. So there was actually, there was actually a reason why there was a difference. We were able to tie it to a tangible asset. So in the end of it all, but there was some, there was uh, inventories um, that sold in the current year that was tied to, and then there's also buildings that were different. Goodwill was the plug. So do we have a gain here in this entry? We got Goodwill because the cost was more than what the value, because the only assets we could tie it to were inventories, but there's a change in inventory from the book to the fair value, and there's a change in buildings. And so the difference is gonna be the goodwill. And of the 500,000, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is, um, we need to figure the income, we gotta figure the income from Oak, but let's see if I wanna do this differently. Hang on one second, let us see here. Um, No, let's just go on. That's fine. Um, okay. So the first thing is, what is my share? Well, I only owe, own, I mean, thirty percent of it, right? So what it says during the year, Oak reported net income of eight hundred thousand. Well, my only income from this is going to be the parent is going to be eight hundred thousand times thirty percent, right? So there's the two forty. Um, okay. Now. We're going to allocate some of this to, um, in, in that same year, uh, we're going to allocate the excess allocated inventory, which is 100000 And then we have to allocate, um, to, see the problem is, because we, we, dif we determined there was a difference in assets, what happens with assets, they have to be depreciated, right? So now we, have, we get a write off, we have to write, because now I'm part of their assets are now my assets, 30%. I have to write off depreciation. So they're telling us that it's four year. See, that it tells us that it's the difference is 200,000 and it's four year remaining life at January 1. So there's, that's where we're getting, so we're reducing it from income. So the total income is 90,000. Now, someone might ask me here, um, why, Dwayne, did they subtract? Is an inventory an asset? Did anybody have that question? Why are they subtracting inventory when inventory is an asset? What made them subtract it from profit right away? It's sold. It's, it's sold, sold, right? It's sold. So when you sell inventory, it moves from, it walks from the balance sheet to the profit and loss in the account called cost of goods sold, right? So that's an important piece of that, that little story problem. If you didn't read that sold, you might think, well, how, why would you ever, that doesn't make sense. We don't take an asset and throw it over and write it off unless it's devalued. Well, it did, it got sold, it's gone. So. That's what they're. That's kind of a little tricky. I don't know why they did it that way. It's, I, I wouldn't have done that in a problem, but it, they're just trying to tell you that they. Yeah, the difference was inventory, but it's sold, so we can write it off right away. And then, so there's your income. So I actually have a question. Okay. A different question, which was, if we're only claiming thirty percent of the income, how come the hundred thousand and the fifty thousand aren't at thirty percent as well? We've already took care of it because we knew what the, uh, if you look what the fair value was, we've already adjusted for that. We, we know what our investment was in it, and we've already allocated that 500000 between those assets. So that's part of our percentage already. So it may be different from, yes? Um, when it comes to the allocation to inventory, you were saying that like 100000 that becomes like the cost of goods sold. They were for some reason because they what they because normally in the last problems we didn't deal with this because all it was is inventory their inventory became our inventory they you know it was a little bit of adjustment um, in this case it's they're showing, telling us that the inventory sold right away 
So we had to then account for that. It's an odd. I don't know. I don't know of any case that'd be like next day it sells. It'd be odd. Like you got you, you bought it came with the company, and then you turn around and it sold right away. And you had to account for it. It's just a weird. So normally speaking, but that what they're telling us is that little story problem is that and it sold. That's the only reason. Because normally speaking, I would expect to see that. Okay, I understand income, right? Eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Excuse me. Eight hundred thousand times thirty percent. Um, I understood the depreciation, but then I, I, I even asked the question for a minute, well, how come, why are we allocating inventory here? I don't get it. And then I went back, this is when I was studying last week, I went and read and it says, and it sold immediately.